This is the escalation of drifting in the United States. This is an example of teams coming in with a lot of money and not having to be financially, um, how do you say, financially. It also means that the grassroots guys fall farther and farther and farther below and you'll no longer see guys coming up through grassroots racing in Pro 2 and be able, being able to compete on this level. It simply won't happen. The guys like the driver of this car, he's too good. He has too much seat time. All right, guys, I want to, I was just creating a BD, oh my God. I was just about to create a BD drift breakdown when um, auto generated, I was watching like all my, all the people I subscribe to, um, Adam's video comes up and it's named SEMA drama. And I never, um, I didn't even read the, I just looked at the thumbnail, I didn't read it and I didn't click on it because it, it was drama, I'm not fed by drama, blah, blah, blah. But I clicked on it and it was playing in the background while I was editing. And then I hear Aaron Losey talk, and I love listening to him talk about like the FD, Pro-Am, grassroots, etc. And it just got me so pumped up because um, first off, stop this video and go watch their videos. Aaron Losey's as uh, Lone Star Drift, as well as Adam LZ, SEMA Drama. Um, uh, and um, I'd, I'd put a little bit in here just to give you guys a little bit of reference on what happened. So I just want to speak on it on my and kind of it kind of wraps into everything that I've been t um, thinking about lately. How and it falls under. I have to give credit where everyone like Drift Life Mag published an article that was written by my buddy Joe um, Filthy Joe Joe Scully. Joe, we did the T-shirt collab, um, and it's basically he was talking about how FD. I have a hair somewhere. FD is getting so expensive, so ridiculous, and it's almost to the point where grassroots people can't get to that point. Um, a lot of a lot of the, our end goals, like in theory, when you're first starting, is like, oh, I wanna do this competitively because you like to see where you stack up against uh, the masses of the drivers, right? Even I said that at one point, um, when I was long, late night garage hang with Scotty G. The amount of money that it takes to get to US Drift in our area, the US Drift, uh, Virginia it's ridiculous I spoke with um, a buddy of mine or a buddy of a buddy anyway he was saying the events cost around like three grand an entry so it's basically I forget and you win like a thousand and some tires etc so realistically you're spending three grand to win some tires and coilovers and uh, I think a thousand bucks or something like that it doesn't add up so it's, it's a it's a quick way to go broke if if you want to get to FD so um, this falls under so many things. Overbuild, overbuilding your car like at a low level where we are, where I am personally, at a lo the lowest level of drifting um, when you're very, very starting out and you're building a monster to be competitive with the guys that have been in it for a while. And it kind of falls under a new sweatshirt to see time over everything. And it gets me pumped up that um, Aaron's I don't know, I just love the fact that he was just like, I like the way he handled certain questions and it was really cool to see him uh, articulate conversation um, with Christoph Blush, Blush um, about the E92, I think it's called, and not a BMW head. Let's go watch that video. But as upcoming drivers, guys that are new to driving, um, a lot of my homies are one, two years in, I'm one and a half in. One season, one of two events, blah. But we're still new. Like realistically, it's like a relationship. You're not really in it until like three, four years, in my opinion. Like even YouTube, I'm still new to YouTube, blah, blah, blah. Where we are right now, I just want to get the point across that we need to focus on seat time and not building our cars. Make sure our cars are functional, tur slap turb skis on it, slap, do whatever you gotta do to get out on this track and get as much seat time as possible. And I do, I, again, I was gonna build. I was gonna do a BD drift breakdown, but I just feel that it's necessary to talk that like those who watch this channel and drive, or even want to pursue driving or drifting, whatever you want to call it, um, don't overbuild your car. Um, again, the the article I'll I'll hopefully post everything in the link description. Joe wrote a piece that is called. Um, overbuilt underdeveloped basically how so many people are overbuilding their cars and they're not getting as much seat time so they're not progressing to the point where they can they can 
improve on an event uh, to event basis. And I just want to talk about it. I want to conversate because I never got to explain what this is meant. Um, it's basically literally seat time is the main priority. Make sure you guys are getting out there and just driving because you learn so much about a car. You learn what's necessary and you learn what, you know, everything. Oh my God. I want to literally run my KAT until it, it goes and then run it again, run one more time with the KAT just so I can understand what 300, what the absolute maximum limit of having 300 ish horsepower gives me with the modded knuckles and not crazy steering angle but a little bit so I can understand. Um, get better at throttle control, get better at understanding if I'm having too much grip and different variables on when you go out to the track. You'll understand that if you have a very simple car because there's not many variables. I hope that I hope this all makes sense. Uh, this kind of leaves me all pumped up, a little, little bit of uh, speechless. But I want to challenge everyone to pursue if you're, if you're, if you want to pursue drifting with the intentions of getting as much seat time and maximizing fun. Building cars is fun, right? It's, it's okay, but there's nothing that replaces seat time. There's literally nothing that will ever replace the time at the track. I mean, there's no, there's no, there's nothing. It's, it's what we live for. And that's kind of like the, the notion behind everything that I've, that I've been kind of coming up with. Like over the time I see, I see, oh, I remember my whole concept of bringing up why we're doing it for a couple years. So I see homies and I guess no, no shade at all. Just, just, I'm just trying to maximize or bring awareness to kind of like what people I look up to have been saying. I see my my good friends or my my great my great again this is no shot please don't take offense to this <laughs> I see good friends of mine and they're either building monsters right off the jump like they're going almost to a pro am level give or take and right off their first and they haven't had one event under their belt they don't even know ever, any like they never had one event and. It, it kills me because I just want everyone to have fun. The time that they spend two years building cars, they could be two years of driving and build this experience and bond behind this sport and enjoy it more and invest more. And it, it, I mean, when I watch FD or even Lone Star Drift videos or Taylor Ray or uh, Monkey London or uh, Southern Hoonan, uh, I want to... Uh, uh, when I shout out everyone, Donut Media, blah blah blah, all those drift videos, I get excited because I'm invested. I've, I I know the experience of of being out on the track. And again, I'm just first year in it, but I don't. I'm, my ignorance always gets to me. But again, I see homies even after one year or one season, they yank their 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 motor and they want more power, more power, more power, more power. If you want to make videos. You don't go out and buy a, buy like a cinema video or what do they call it? I think a cinema camera. Like you go out and buy a, a point and shoot DSLR. This that, and that. you have to build your resume and build your your strengths up, or and and get familiar with your craft. You guys, let me know what you think. What is it? What do, what do you see when? I guess what are your opinions on this whole subject? Is is it is it good to have a high budget and go crazy and have the most tire smoke, the most amount of crazy, crazy con, or do you understand, do you agree with Aaron, and even I, or even Drift Life Mag, or even Joe Ascoli, or um, and whoever's on board, I don't know, but I'm just, I just want to bring awareness, I think this, I think this subject should be brought up way more than it is, and I think we should, as a community, keep growing, keep pushing, keep doing what we're doing at a grassroots beginner level, so, Again, I'm just a novice. What do I know? Nothing. So let me know. Post them in the comments below. As well as hit up your homie on the Instagram DMs. <laughs> just kidding. All right. Um, yeah. Happy Thursday, guys. We love you. Just one a little, little, little rant. It's kind of a lot of a rant. But I'm. Uh, it gets me pumped up. And I don't. I put a little bit of clip in there. I kind of feel bad. And I almost. Like, I, I want to. Uh, put this title in a certain way just to bring a more awareness 
and I don't know if I want like a little part of me does and a little bit of part of me doesn't because like I don't want to I don't want this to be a or I don't want this to be considered drama I just want it to be awareness this is not for anything but awareness holla at your boy happy Thursday guys we love you see you tomorrow and nothing's ever made me cry as much as you I swear your smile gives me motivation and some new ideas my worst fear was always you not knowing who I am Cause I've been on the road dream chasing for you out here I was the first thing that you opened your eyes to And the last one that you said goodnight to I went home and cried to And I bawled my eyes out and then watched you Glad I got you, that's a blatant fact And every negative thing I said I swear I take it back